Thanks for showing up. Glad to see everybody here. This is week four to SLI leadership training. Let's get started. Our agenda today is to review and discuss our homework. To review the principles, characteristics, and habits of leadership. We have a leadership roundtable. We're going to really discuss maybe the principles and concepts we've been talking about over the last three or four weeks. We're going to summarize it and assign some more homework. Everybody ready? Let's go. Okay, let's talk about our homework, all right? Look for and record examples of leadership principles, characteristics, and habits. Who did that? I don't know about you. Well, tell me about it. All right. Uh, uh, for my principles, uh, I just wrote down the thing that I thought was Okay. Why don't you share it? Why don't you share those? Well, the principles, I, I think, um, a, a, a important principle would be like being prompt. Or uh, always studying and know, getting to know your product. Uh-huh. I just listed down two for each. Uh, as a cat, uh, as a habit, um, I always try to make a habit of the help others to be here, uh, stay positive and focus. <coughs> and it's, it's a characteristic. Well, that was a hard one. I really just had being a model on about that, I, I listed down like I always try to do what's right and uh, never putting things off to the rest of me. Okay, you want to be a professional Anybody else uh, record a, a moment where they saw some leadership uh, take place either here in the building or some other place? No? Did you guys uh, do your homework? Did you look for and record an example of leadership? Okay. Um, core values are, are defined as those things which we believe are most important aspects um, in, for leadership. Um, and I think, uh, just like you were saying, we set an example by um, being prompt, um, leading by example, um, having good habits, um, you to be uh, in a leading position, and product knowledge is going to be the most Just, just having good habits uh, in general, you know, those things that we uh, do in just day-to-day -day living, just being a model citizen, uh, uh, you know, just, just doing the right things. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the workplace, leadership, uh, our core beliefs about people and how we treat them uh, will impact how we manage them on a day-to-day -day, um, day -day basis. And uh, like you always say, don't uh, ask someone to do something to you. Exactly. Uh, and I think that's so exactly. 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 Anybody else want to contribute to the discussion here about? Well, you know, I wasn't here for the last class of the funeral or whatever, but I did really. Uh, I noticed something this week that Doug did, as far as leadership, uh, something that I'm gonna, that I'm going to incorporate on my weekend shifts. Um, usually, like people just spread out where they want to sit at. He went and he took anybody that was here under a month or so and put them all close to him. No matter if they wanted to sit there or not. So that sometimes you gotta make decisions that no one else, you know, would agree with, but it's for the better of the team. Yeah, you know, you know leadership and management is making unpopular decisions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> if there was if every decision you made was popular, it would be hard, you know, but it, that's not the way it works. Anybody else want to contribute to uh, example of leadership well, in the workplace? I mean this week this week, I've had the opportunity to sit on, sit in with you as we counseled an employee and uh, got to see that it was handled in, in the right way, with respect, without mincing words and without any sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, ambiguity. And you set the expectation, you did it in a, in a kind way but a firm way. And I thought that was a good lesson for me to learn, just to witness it and 
as, as, as we talked about, you've got 30 years of experience, and that's, that's why, because I, I think the term I used was, you were smooth, very smooth with you, came out naturally. And it, was, it was just good, it was good training for me. To, Thanks, Doug. Uh, well, the situation was that uh, we, we had a, uh, an agent that was um, significantly underperforming and been noted. Uh, Jerry had tried to coach her, uh, Vicky tried to coach her, Doug had tried to coach her. And so finally, we went down into her call numbers, uh, uh, her numbers, and we started looking at what the issues were. And it was very obvious that in terms of dish sales, she was about half of what we, 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 would, we would expect from somebody with that experience, about half, right? So you have to ask yourself uh, the question, why, why, why? Why would she be that way, right? It's either attitude or activity or skill set. Those are the three places you look, right? Attitude, activity, or skill set. Seemed to have a relatively good attitude, uh, and she was getting on the phone and making calls, so somewhere in her skill set was an issue, right? So we kind of knew that going into it. So we brought her in, sat her, in, sat her down, and said, hey, we've got some concerns. Uh, let's talk about it a little bit. What do you think the issues are? Why do you think you're not doing what you're doing? And her defense was she thought she was doing better. But as she talked, we discovered that her uh, attitude towards the phone call and her understanding of how to do the video call flow <coughs> what, what wasn't there. So Doug uh, set expectations with her that she would treat each call like a dish call which is a new way of looking at it for her, because she looked at a cable call. And that uh, she would uh, fight for every single call by going into the uh, managing objections technique that we gave them in class. <coughs> and so hopefully we'll resolve that today. But what Doug's talking about is you got to be a straight shooter, you got to be honest, uh, you can't mince words, you have to be tactful, right? You have to come out of respect, but you, you, gotta, you absolutely have to tell them how the cow ate the cabbage. You can't dance around it. If they're doing well, you tell them they're doing well. If they're not doing well, you don't miss words. You say there's some things uh, that we see that are challenges and we'd like to discuss them with you. Here, here's what you're doing and here's our expectation. How can you get where you need to be? What can we do to help you? And that's, that's how that went, right? More Absolutely. Yes, it was very, very good. Anybody else want to talk about uh, example of leadership they saw this week? A uh, book report summarizes the second leadership book you chose to read and what you got out of it. Who wants to read their book for you? I'll go ahead and start. I'm actually listening to a book on tape. It's uh, the Dale Carnegie uh, Lifestyle Management <coughs> Success, something like that. Um, right now, I'm on the principles that he's writing, about, that he's talking about. There was a quote in there that I found last night that I really liked. It said, uh, Leadership is the capacity and the will to rally men and women to a common purpose and a character which inspires confidence. That was said by uh, Bernard Montgomery, which I have no idea who he is. But. You know Bernard Montgomery? No. <laughs> but there's uh, some, uh, some of the principles I like, which uh, one of them is let the, uh, the other person save face, which I love that. I believe in that very, very much. And then there's talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the, the other person. Yeah. I can't, I believe, yeah, I believe that very much. You can't say you're perfect, you know, no one's perfect. Yeah. You gotta let the other person know that, yeah. You, you need to be without sin, cast the first stone. Exactly. Or... And then, uh, I like, make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest. And, or a couple. And uh, we talked about this, ask questions instead of giving direct orders. Yeah, that's... You and I talked about that. Right. right. And uh, I hope there's one, uh, call attention to people's mistakes indirectly. Those are some of the principles I really like out that what I'm listening to yeah, right now. Yeah, you'll call them out directly and say, so-and-so screwed up. Or this. You say, hey, what we've noticed is some people are doing this. And these guys. Right. We need to correct that. Just to let you know, uh, Bernard Montgomery was a famous British general during World War II. He was Monty. Oh, okay. I knew I've heard of him somewhere. All right. Anybody else have uh, a report? Um, well, I was sick all week, so I, I was just looking at the book but not actually reading. <laughs> so when I started trying to cram it all in at the last minute, um, I, uh, I was finishing what back to here won't be today. And uh, it kind of made me feel good. I, I was looking at the book all week and I was like, well, I'm too sick to read it. 
And as I read it last night, it was saying, stop making excuses. And it, it, I looked at myself like, oh, that's, that was my excuse. Yeah. And uh, let's see. When they were talking about uh, withholding information to have an advantage over others, uh, for instance, if you knew something was wrong with the portal here, and you knew how to get around it, but didn't tell everybody else, you know, that would make you a good So let's just talk about something. I'm gonna see some of them. Huh? I'm gonna see some of them. Okay, man. That's a good side. How about you, sir? I'm uh, reading uh, Finding the Leader in You. And, Who wrote that? Uh, Anton G. Camarado. Uh, Not familiar, but I may be pronouncing that as well. Camarado. Okay. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, a big reader. But uh, it, it, it adds a lot of interesting things that uh, it's kind of sparking my interest a little more uh, as far as, um, you know, as a, like, I mean, I, I read when I was in school, but since then I probably had, I don't think I've read since then. Uh, but uh, in this particular one, uh, identity is one of the chapters that it kind of covers. Who are you? Uh, and, 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 and who do you want to see? And who do you want to be seen as? people see you, uh, what, what, what's their first impression of you? Uh, especially in uh, a type of position where you're, you're leading others, uh, you definitely want to have a shine to you, uh, a glow to you. Uh, your values and your beliefs, uh, why do you do the things that you do? Uh, going back, uh, what, what are those things that are important to you? Uh, what do you feel about parents? Uh, and I think that's, a, that's something that is going on. Uh, your your capabilities, your strategies, uh, what new ideas do you bring to the table? Uh, and I think that's something that's going to be important if you're going to be in that type of position. And your behaviors, again, uh, uh, lead by example. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, how do people see you again? And that's that's something good in the book. And then set the environment. And I'm, I'm still, you know, reading a little more and more. And uh, thanks to you. Oh, listen, that, uh, that inspires me, man. You know, uh, one of the characteristics, top characteristics of, of, uh, of great leaders is, is, is a group. A high, high percentage of them are readers, you know. They're curious. They're educated. They want to know more. They, they want to understand how other people did it, what motivated people. Just that curiosity will help you grow as a leader. Anybody else have a book they want to talk about? I'm still reading the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. I've got another book that I picked out, but it did say it's the All second right. book, and this okay. is the second book. Um, there's a couple of, I mean, I've, I've, I've read the book, so I've, I've got basically, I've taken every chapter and I've written a sentence on what each chapter is. Um, one of them, uh, the law of influence, uh, leadership is simply about influencing people. Um, there's another one, the law of reproduction. It, it's, it takes a leader to raise up a leader. Uh, the law of victory, leaders find a way for them to win. So leading the team to, to victory. So, um, yeah, what does that victory mean? Well, they find I mean, victory and getting your ass kicked. Well, you know, uh, I, I guess there's a, there's a definition for yeah. you know, how do you define victory. So. Yeah, yeah. I was always kicking my ass and I lasted longer than I thought I did. I, <laughs> Where that a victory? <laughs> yeah, right. right. Suffering than I thought it was, about 30 seconds tougher than I thought it would be. All right, woo That's good. All right, everybody else? Okay, for those of you who, who didn't uh, uh, jump in and get a reading assignment done, uh, let's jump in next week and make sure that you get that done because we're going to continue to talk about that. Who wrote a personal vision or mission statement for themselves? That applies to your work and leadership. Let me hear it, brother. Okay. Um, I will lead by example and hold myself accountable so that I'll be able to expect the same from my team members. Uh, I see constant self-improvement and look for the same in my team. Okay, good. That's good, man. How about you? I would, I put, I would like to, I would lead um, to the best of my ability and uh, keep learning from what I've learned from you and Jerry and keep learning from you guys and maybe more mentors to one day where I could be one of the top guys in this company as it continues to grow. Cool. Uh, do you have a personal mission statement for you? Okay. Okay. Right, how about you? Do you have a chance to write one? I was out last week. Okay, how about you? Know where I went. It was short. Short's good, man. All right. So um, I, w I want to be like teaching people how to be courteous and polite. You know, I think courtesy is very important when you speak to someone in the front. 
Oswald, I've been prompt no time, that's one of my biggest things. And um, I always just do the best you can. Do the best you report every time, so you're going to have a good outcome. Always do your best, right? That's one of the four agreements with Tom Miguel Ruiz. You know, there's, I was saying in, uh, in religion, right? Uh, you preach the gospel all the time. If you have to, use words, right? So if you want to teach somebody to be courteous, what do you do? Be courteous. be courteous, right? This is my vision, guys. This is my statement. I bring value to the organization by providing coaching, counseling, and training services to employees, managers, and executives. I do my best every day to make a difference in other people's lives by providing the best insight and advice I can. I seek to improve my performance and skill set on a daily basis. I continue to seek to learn new ways to more effectively do my job. That's kind of how I want to roll, you know? So, guys, next week, make sure that you take time to craft a personal mission statement or a personal mission statement for yourself, right? For you, you guys who wrote one, congratulations, that's fantastic. If you want to rewrite it, maybe kind of expand it a little bit, just start to think about it. Because what I want you to do is I want you to live your life, sort of, based on what's in that statement, right? Based on, remember what Khalil said about what people think of when they see you. Who are you? What are your core values, right? People need to see that in, in your life. Right? In the Christian community, right, we talk about whether or not somebody's a, a Christian or not. You're not supposed to say, I'm a Christian, and people say, oh, you're a Christian. No, you're supposed to have, have what? Fruit in your life, right? What's fruit? I mean, fruit of the Spirit, your fruit. You're, you're, you, you live your life a certain way, you know? So anyway, it's the same thing in leadership. Okay, guys, we're going to speed along here because we're going to take about a 10 minute uh, out to talk about something I think is really important. But here we go. What you got there, Steve? What's leadership? I caught you in your mouth for me. I'm sorry. What's leadership? The ability to lead, the ability to guide, direct, and correct. All right, we keep hearing that word influence people, influence people, influence people, right? That means that things you do and say and how you live your life impact on other people. You influence them. <clears throat> what does it take to be a leader? Principles, characteristics, habits, behaviors, leadership principles. We keep saying this in all these books we're reading, right? It says, know yourself. Know your stuff. Know your people, right? Know yourself, know your stuff, know your people. Be a good communicator. Set the example, lead by example, lead from the front. We keep hearing this over and over and over again, right? <coughs> Can you imagine a Marine Corps <coughs> officer running behind the formation going, turn to the left? Everybody would be going, what the, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're not, we're, no, we're turning to the right, buddy. Ensure the task is understood, supervised, and completed. Right? We uh, talked to an uh, employee yesterday. So we, as managers, have to circle the wagons back up and complete that communication cycle to make sure that whatever we said to her yesterday that she's done it or she hadn't done it so that we know where we are, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing here. Train your people as a team. Make sound timely decisions. Develop a sense of responsibility. Follow your people in accordance with their abilities. Seek responsibility take responsibility. Characteristics, fairness. You know who this guy, does anybody know who this guy is? I, I got this picture. I actually met him when I was 13 years old. Vale Ennis, last of the old-time sheriffs, uh -huh. killed seven people during his reign as sheriff. <laughs> Judgment, fitability, initiative, decisiveness, tact, integrity, enthusiasm, bearing. <coughs> got to look, they got to have the image, you know. Unselfishness, courage, knowledge, loyalty, endurance, emotional intelligence, right? Characters of effective leaders. You've got to know and understand how people are thinking, how they're feeling, what's going on in their heads, right? You've got to understand how humans think and what upsets them, right? I have said things to people that I meant absolutely no harm. I didn't mean anything by what I said, and I offended somebody. So you have to be aware of that, right? You've got to be an empathetic listener. What does empathetic mean? Uh, You've got to walk in their moccasins, yeah, right? You, you, got, you got to appreciate their point of view, right? You got, okay. you got to really listen for their point of view and know how to inspire and motivate. What's the difference between inspiration and motivation? Inspiration and motivation, I, I believe, is something that, uh, that, that's inside of you uh -huh. that uh, inspire. And it, it, it's very similar. 
because that's the one that, uh, that's, that's uh, looked at someone else. Um, they don't know how to actually put it. Well, I'm going to share a way with you. Maybe you can uh, share this with somebody else, right? You can motivate somebody for a period of time. I can motivate you today. But I hope to inspire you for a lifetime. Okay. Right? All right. Well, inspire you for a lifetime, motivate you for the day. Okay. Be proactive, right? If you see something you should get done, go get it done. Begin with the end in mind. In today's topic, put first things first. And we're going to talk about that in uh, pretty good detail today. Think win win. Somebody said uh, find ways for them to win. You were talking about find, find ways to. Uh, yeah. For them, for them to win. Seek first to understand, then be understood. Synergize. Sharpen the saw. So, what is leadership? Doing the right things. Management is? Doing things right. And what's leader management? Right. Doing the right, right things right. right. Okay. All right. Ensure the task is understood, supervised, and completed. Okay. Give me an example of that is within the work in, within the workforce. How that might work. Go, oh, buddy. Uh, an example of leadership, or an example of ensuring a task is understood. Surprisingly. Yeah. Why is this considered a leadership principle? So that you can have an effective gear shift and a well greased engine. Uh, do the task at hand and get it done well and right. Uh, everyone needs to be knowledgeable, everyone needs to be efficient, everyone needs to be able to <coughs> interpret, understand, and acknowledge the fact that there's an angle. What happens when you don't do a good job of communicating what you want? Well, part of what you want done. What happens? You don't, you don't have any, uh, you don't have any guidance. Uh, like yeah, yeah, confusion. People, yeah. people get confused? Yeah, people get angry? Yeah. People get frustrated? Right? In general, there are exceptions to this rule. Most people want to do good. Most people want to work hard. Most people want to do good at work, right? <laughs> they get frustrated when you don't ensure that the task you've asked to do is under, under, understood. Right? Uh, supervised and completed. Why is supervision so important? You, you know, there's a difference between micromanaging and supervision, right? If Steve and I were doing a project together and we decided what the task was going to be, and I checked with him on Wednesday because he said he'd have it 50% done on Wednesday. It's perfectly okay for him to do that. And he brings it in and says, let's discuss the 50% that you've got done. Looks great. I think you need to expand this a little more. You're going in the right direction. Looks fantastic. Do you think you can get this completed for me at least on a draft basis by Friday? Right? Right? Okay, so I'll see you Friday at 8.30. Sound okay? Okay. That's supervision. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Micromanagement is you sign a Monday at 845, call them at 10. Steve, have you started on that yet? Steve, you got that done yet? <laughs> Steve, when are you going to start working on that? Yeah, right. Steve, I've got a couple of sentences I want you to incorporate in the pad. Here, here's a couple of sentences for you. That's micromanagement. You know what? I don't know about you guys. I don't need that. Right? <laughs> okay, why well, is this important? How much you see this principle in the workplace? Give me an example of how this could work, or give me an example where this didn't work at Satellite Country. Give me an example where where we had a breakdown. Well, I know I know where it works. Like those minor issues that, that Jerry printed up. You you listen to the initial phone call. You need to just find out you know where they're doing good, where they're doing you know could you do some improvement. You go have a conversation with them, ask them what they do, what they how they think they're doing. Give them a few ideas of what they could have did better. Show them how to do it. And then later on down, you know, towards the end of their shift, you follow back up. They just said bring the wagon back around and that'll be the, the second half. You listen to another phone call, see what you uh, what you taught is being you know, applied or not. So, because if you tell someone to do something, you never go back and check it, and, and how do you know it ever got done? Alright. Yeah. 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 Ensure the task is understood, supervised, and complete, right? There's something called <coughs> four corners communication, four corners training, right? That's when I sit down with somebody and I say, hey, let me explain what your task is and how I, I, I'd like to see it completed and when the dates are that they need to be completed and all those kind of things, right? So, so I tell them what I want to do. And then I might show them what, what that looks like. Here's an example. Here's how I would do it. Here's how I would construct it, right? 
Then what I would do to complete the communication cycle, I'd say, Steve, why don't you share with me how you're going to approach this and show me how you're going to get this done. So he's going to repeat back what I've already said. At that point, you know, I have a chance <coughs> either to clarify the communication or to confirm that's exactly what I'm looking for. See how that works? And just take the time to to, to, uh, to communicate. Does anybody have a question about that? How, how many times will you have to tell someone you're going to check on them, and if you never check on them, then what are they going to do? They're not going to do it. Because right. they know you're not checking. But we're going to go check on this lady today, and we're going to reinforce what we said yesterday by doing that. All right. What is integrity? What's it look like? Why is it important? What is it? What's integrity? What's integrity, Simon? Uh, I'm trying to give you an example. Um, can I think? <laughs> Doing the right thing when no one's looking? Doing the right thing when no one's looking. That's what integrity is. Right? Doing the right thing when nobody's there. That's integrity, right? Integrity is your yeses are yes and your noes are no. Right? If you say you're going to do something, you do it. If you say you're not going to do it, you don't do it. That's integrity, right? Integrity means that, that you're honest with yourself. You're honest with yourself, right? You have an internal mechanism that keeps you honest, right, with yourself. And you have integrity you think you do. There's a thousand dollars laying out here, it's not yours, you know, that, that could pay a lot of bills. <coughs> Well, it's not yours, right? So you do everything you possibly can to ensure that you you, you find the rightful owner instead of you know grabbing thousand bucks and go. Anybody lose this? Anybody lose that book? Anybody lose that book? Anybody lose that book? Okay. You know, that's not integrity, right? It's not integrity, right? What happens when you fail to model integrity, Doug? What happened? I'm sorry. What when you happened? fail to model integrity, what if your people believe that you have no integrity? Well, they're certainly not inspiring them to have integrity of their own. Um, what will they do? I mean, just they, I, I know what I would do if I had a boss that didn't have integrity. I just wouldn't respect you. I mean, I would do what you say, but I wouldn't respect you. So you know, you know respect, and, and you might be undercut the whole time. I, I, I would do because it's my job to do what you tell me to, but I, I wouldn't necessarily have faith or I wouldn't believe in you. I'd right. just be like, I'll do it because you told me to, but I'm not doing it because uh, I think it's your, you know, your good my, guy. My first supervisor, I won't tell you what his name is, but I, I know it, um, stole uh, $13,000 out of my commission, my very first big commission check. And I didn't know it for like 90 days because I didn't know how to do the commissions, all that kind of stuff. He took $13,000 out of my pocket. And, uh, you cannot imagine how much money that was to me because a year before I paid $19,000 as a Marine Corps officer. <coughs> you know, that's crazy, right? Uh, I went to him and confronted him and he denied it and all that kind of stuff. And finally, I proved that he did it. I eventually got the money back. But man, our relationship was ruined forever. I, I, I couldn't be in the same room with him. He'd walk in the room in a meeting and try to say something, I would just, I'd leave. Yeah. I, I, I told my boss one time, he says, you have to give this guy more respect. I said, no, I don't. I appreciate you being my boss, but the answer is, no, I don't. I said, here's what's going to happen. If I'm staying in that room another 30 seconds, I'm going to kick his butt. Okay? That's just the way it is. Ruin the relationship. An absolute ruined relationship. You, you can't violate integrity and expect somebody to, to trust you, to, to follow you, to believe in you, right? You really should loan money to any of the people that work for you. I've done it. All the managers have done it. We do it, right? And you better not borrow money from people who work for you. If you do, you better make daggum sure you pay that money back. You know what I'm saying? Don't make them come ask you for that money because what is that? That's a violation of integrity. You should have done it in the first place. Right, you shouldn't have done it. But maybe you were in a desperate place. Somebody stole your wallet. You needed five bucks to get some gas to go home. The only person in the building was Simon. Simon loaned you the money. Get your ass to the bank. Get another five dollars out. Bring it back that evening or bring it back the next morning and say thank you very much. I appreciate it. By the way, here's five bucks. Go buy yourself a sandwich. 
right? You see, you see what I'm saying? So integrity is really important. Okay. They they actually teach us in the Marine Corps. Marine Corps has leadership all the way up and down the ranks. They actually teach us never to put yourself in a position where you can take from your men. Yeah, play never, cards with them. Never. Don't play cards with them. Don't, take, don't, don't gamble don't take, with them. Don't take money to uh, to money. drive them. Like don't carpool and take money from them. None of that stuff. You know, I just I mean you just don't. Don't mess with their pay. All right. Uh, last week we talked about strengths and weaknesses, right? And we had a really good conversation in the admin uh, area about this. And one of the things that kept coming up was time management, time management, time management. I just don't seem to have enough time in the day. I'm not working on other for a So we're going to talk for quite a while today about Stephen uh, Covey's habit, which is the third habit, called put first things first. Any idea what, he, what that means? Prioritizing. Huh? Yeah. Prioritizing. Getting everything in order. Put put first things first. What, what 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 is it? What is it? Prioritize. So what what needs the what needs immediate attention and what can be put off just a little bit after that and so on and so forth. It's classic time management, right? Put put first thing first, right? So uh, what does it mean? Why is this important? What are the benefits of this? Give uh, examples of this in the workplace, all right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about it, right? Most people, listen to this guys, are driven by the concept of urgency. Now I say in sales class <laughs> that we have to have a sense of urgency to be effective. And we do. Right? And I always have an illustration. That's my lead hunter, right here, my hunter gatherer tribe. Mm -hmm. Run them out. I pull our schedule out and I say, Oh, there's some deer in the pasture over there, Marcus. Uh, we're scheduled to be down there on Tuesday. I don't know. I don't know. I want to eat today. Got to kill it today, right? Sense of urgency, right? But most people are driven by sense of urgency but to really affect positive change in our lives. Read that. Write that down. Positive change in our lives. We need to reorganize the way we spend our time based on the concept of importance, not urgency. Write that down. It's importance we're looking for. Not urgency. You need a pen? Oh, no. I got one. Let me get you one. No, I have, I, 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 you got an extra one? No, I don't have an extra one. Does everybody have a pen? <coughs> okay. Importance, not urgency. Okay. So what does that mean? All right. We're going to look at time matrix of activities. Here they are up here, right? And I put some activities up here and put them in different quadrants of this matrix, right? And in the first uh, quadrant, <laughs> we have important matters we have to do that are urgent. And we spend almost all of our time in this quadrant. If you look at your life, it's a 24-hour clock, right? Most of that time is not sleeping time, is spent in this quadrant. And we're doing important things that are urgent. Right? If, you know what? We don't really affect this much. This operates on us. This drives us, right? And this is pressing matters, crisis, Panics, firefighting, putting out fires, deadlines, and all the other things that we, we have to do, right? Important, urgent, drive revenue, make sales. I mean, all these things are important and urgent, right? But this area gets out of control, and it causes us to feel frustrated because we simply don't have enough time in the day to do all the things we need to do. So Covey says... Decide what's important in your life, right? What's important in your life, and spend more time in that quadrant, right? So what we have is we have four cop quadrants. Important and urgent, which is where we spend most of our time. Important and not urgent. Not important, not urgent, right? And if you're, if you're spending a lot of time down here, Right? You're not being productive. Because it's not important and it's not urgent. So you're not getting your goals achieved, right? You don't want to be here. This is not where you want to be. And this is interruptions, some of your calls you make during the day, some of the mail or email you get, some meetings, unprepared meetings, uh, doing crazy things running out in left field, trying to solve a problem or 
too deep in a problem that doesn't matter. <coughs> Over here, trivia, busy work, gossip. Anybody here ever hear any gossip? Ever. Satellite mm -hmm. country? Yeah. Ever? Ever. Time wasters, being unproductive, and everything else, right? So this is what Covey says. He says if you want to control <coughs> your life, take control of your life, spend more time here in quadrant two, right? Where you're dealing with important, but not necessarily urgent things. And what we're talking about here is planning, strategic, <clears throat> tactical, planning. <coughs> strategic planning is the big picture. Where do we want to be in 18 months? What do we want to look like in 18 months, right? And tactical is how are we going to get through this week? And still move forward on our strategic plan, right? And I want to highlight a, a word here that's important. Prevention. Prevention. Right? Okay. Prevention. What is prevention? What does that mean? Prevention. Taking the time to, <laughs> to think about what can keep us from our goals um, and take measures to not go there essentially. Exactly. If you look at your day, you spend hours and 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 hours dealing with the same problem with the same agent all the time. Right? You spend 15 or 20 minutes over in quadrant two and develop a plan to deal with that particular agent, right? Take the time to do a tactical plan to deal with that particular agent. Also over here, we have relationships and building relationships. And also over here, we have things like physical fitness, exercise, nutrition, professional knowledge, reading books, reading books, right? And a lot of this stuff falls into uh, another one of his habits, which is sharpen the saw. Reading books uh, that, that help you acquire knowledge to help you do your job better. So over here, you're doing planning, you're looking at systems and processes, right? How can we get the sales agents to sell more during the day? How, how can we do that? Right? Well, you take the time to critically think about your business and critically think about uh, everything that you're doing. Critically think about it. And, and, and we don't spend time critically thinking about anything. We're too busy over here fighting fires. Right? In our personal lives, we're too busy over here fighting fires and we're not taking enough time doing these things. Why is it important to be physically fit? Endurance. Healthy, healthy lives. Physical fitness, right? Endurance is right. one of the characteristics of a good leader. Physical fitness, right? If you don't see balance in life, emotionally and spiritually, physically balanced, you're going to blow something out. You're going to blow something out. If you have 3,000 pounds on one side of your car in the back seat on the right side, what's going to happen to that back rear right tire? It's going to blow up, right? What's going to happen to the alignment on your right side? Right. What's going to happen to alignment on your left side? Right? Think about that. You got 3,000 pounds of back, right, rear. What's happening in the front there? You have to evenly distribute that weight. You have to stay in balance, right? Maybe that car can take 3,000 pounds, but it's not real smart to put 3,000 pounds on the right rear corner. Does that make sense? Does I understand that? Yes. Okay, in life, guys, we're <coughs> sitting in a four-legged chair. Four-legged chair. It's pretty doggone stable, right? I'm sitting here pretty good. I'm living my life pretty good, right? What are the four legs, right? There's a spiritual leg. There's an emotional leg. There's a physical leg, right? Those are those are three of the legs, right? And the the, the fourth is relationships and the emotional type 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 things. But if you go through life, right, and you ignore the physical aspects of your life, one of the legs falls off. Your physical leg falls off. You can still sit in the chair, 
but you have to concentrate and focus more on sitting in the chair. Well, let's say you lose another leg. You can still sit in the chair, but now almost all your attention is in sitting in the chair. All your attention is sitting in the chair, quadrant one. You lose another leg. You're sitting on one stinking leg. What do you do 24 hours a day? You think about sitting in that chair, right? You, you can do it, but imagine what's going to happen to your legs and your, and, your, and your body and the stress you're putting on your body to sit here all day on one leg, right? And what happens if you, if you don't stay focused? Oh, ooh, oh, bang. You see where I'm getting at? So that happens over here in quadrant two. Quadrant two. So what do we want to do? We want to spend time in quadrant two. Why? Because it allows us to critically think, to do the things we need to do, to sharpen the saw, and those sort of things. I'll tell a real quick uh, story here uh, about sharpening the saw, right? Staying in this part of it. Jerry and I are competitive guys, you better believe it. So Pamela walks in here and she says, I'm going to give one of you guys $10,000 for sawing through this big log right here. Jerry goes, <clears throat> I need that 10,000 bucks. He grabs a saw and he starts sawing. And then pretty soon Simon and Doug are jumping on his shoulders helping him saw because he said, I'll give these guys part of this money, right? And then Travis walks by and he says, Travis, help me saw this saw. So Travis jumps on his shoulders, right? And he's sawing the saw. And they look at me and I'm sitting in the corner, old guy. You know, and so we're gonna kick his ass, right? <clears throat> no, no. I take a little toolbox out, I pull a little file out, and I start sharpening my saw. Right? I'm over here in quadrant two. I'm sharpening my saw. I put oil on the blade. I make sure the chains are dusted. I make sure the oil is fresh. Good, good gas in there. Right? My engine's ready to go. Jerry's over there sweating his butt off. Simon's jumping up and down on his shoulders. Doug is screaming and yelling in his ear. Travis is jumping on his back. And I walk over and go, brrrm, brrrm. I'm done. <laughs> Jerry kills himself, kills Simon, kills Doug, and cuts off Travis's legs, you know? With your chainsaw. Uh, with my chainsaw. <laughs> so it's working so well. Right? You see the illustration? Take the time to sharpen your saw, and you'll be what? Sharper. Take the time to sharpen your saw and you'll be what? More productive. Right? They did a study in the Marine Corps. <coughs> One of the goofy things that happens when you're an officer is a little contest ensues where who can stay up the longest in a combat situation, right? I stayed up 47 hours. I didn't sleep for 47 hours, you know. I cut three of my toes off by mistake when I tried to open some chow. And all right, so they did a study, right, and they took a team of young Marine Corps second lieutenants and they had them do certain tasks over a 24-hour period of time. They took another group of second lieutenants, had them do the same tasks, except they rotated sleep provisions for this team, right? So each one on this team was forced to take time to sleep. So the guys over here were killing themselves for 24 hours. What they found out was the guys over here who sharpened the saw by sleeping, were 10 times more productive towards the end of that 24-hour period. Because you stay up for 24 hours, man, in a pretty intense environment, your uh, mental capabilities get uh, more diminished. But if you get a, a, some rest, you can step back in there and be on it for a while, and they will teach you back around and you rest for a little while. So what does that say? That says that we got to sharpen the saw, and we have to figure out some way to stay in quadrant two. Now, to stay in quadrant two, you got to cut trivia, busy work, gossip, time wasters out of your life, right? You don't have time for that. They don't do you any good because they're over here, they're not important, not urgent. You don't want to do this, right? You want to minimize this. And the way you minimize this is you take a lot of time thinking about processes over here and how to best spin your time and create more time in your day to do the things that you need to do. 
And if you focus on the important things first, you'll get the important things done. If you don't focus on the important thing, what happens? You get the unimportant stuff done all the time, but you don't move the ship forward. Right? What's an important thing when you're taking off with a ship? Taking the ropes off the dock. Right? <laughs> yeah? There are lots of people who have put that engine in full force. You know, let's go! <laughs> and they're still hooked to the dock. Right? you got to take the time to get off the ship, take the ropes off, throw them over, have somebody roll them up on the deck. Does that make sense? Yes. Because you can't go where you need to go if you haven't done the important things. There's no fuel in the boat. We're going to go real fast for about an hour. And then what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Right? There's no food on the boat. Alright? you got 2,000 Marines on here. Cannibalism is going to be a real thing on Wednesday. Right? And we're going to start with the Navy guys. Okay? <laughs> right? You don't feed a, 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 a Marine Corps kid three days into it, he'll come up with a way to feed himself. You know, it's, it's not going to be pretty, you know. A week into it, all the Navy guys are gone. Played, barbecued, you know. So, if you don't have an important thing like food on the boat, what have you done? You, have to yourself. you didn't do the right thing, right? You didn't do the right thing. You didn't do the first things first. So, you got to make sure that the ship runs. <laughs> it's got a good engine. It's got oil in it. It's got gas in it. Make sure that you know where you're going. You've got a good map. You got provisions on board. You got good people on board that are trained to do their jobs, right? That's All right. of those are important things, right? You do it over here. Right? Yeah. Planning. Who, what, when, where, why, how, right? Who, what, where, why, how? I mean, that needs to be answered all the time, and it can be answered personally, right? Am I doing a whole bunch of important and urgent things, but not doing important things? Am I getting done in my life what I need to get done? Or do I need to spend more time over here? Covey says, if you want to take control of your life, spend time over here. Stop this, stop this, and spend time over here. Does that make sense? Yes. What do you think? <coughs> Is that powerful? Okay, so here's the deal. How do we do this? How do you do this? How do you spend more time in, in quadrant two? How do you do that? Uh, planning. Um, well, I mean, like you said, just avoiding the third and the fourth quadrant. Uh huh. That frees up some time. And you just got to prioritize. You got to do important things first. Education. First things first. It really, we don't think that planning is an important thing, but as managers, we need to have a daily, a weekly, and a monthly plan, and we need to communicate that effectively <coughs> to ourselves every single day. And you need, the very first thing, and I've said it to you guys a hundred times, first thing you do every single morning is get with every single one of your salespeople and set their expectations and plan for the day. Why is that important? So they have a bonus. Yeah. How can you feel like you won anything if you don't have a target to shoot at? You know, we're going to give target badges to the first person who shoots 21 rounds in the air. No. <laughs> No, right? We're not going to give you a badge for shooting 21 rounds in the air. We're going to give you a badge for hitting the target, right? And you shoot 21 time, rounds in the air, you don't feel that good about it. I mean, it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> do it. That, that's fun, right? But you don't feel good about it. But set a goal. I want to hit that bullseye 21 times. And you hit it 21 times. Woo! Feel pretty doggone good about it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Travis, what are you getting out of this? Well, I mean, you gotta know what the end goal is first before you do anything. You have to know what you're going after so you know what you're planning for. Um, which okay, a lot of people don't even, we don't even know what our end goal is. Long well, sometimes we don't. And of course, uh, with the Covey thing, right, we've already started, begin with the end result in mind, which we covered last week, right? So begin with the, with the end result in mind, right? But, <laughs> What are we getting out of this, on a personal basis and on a professional basis? I'll give it a shot, guys. Um, once again, recognizing what needs to what I say recognizing weakness, perhaps. Uh, establish uh, a plan of how you're going to uh, strengthen that weakness. 
Uh, and then establish preventative measures so that they never go that direction again. And continue to work with that person so you can build a relationship so you always in both the same thing. Yeah, I, absolutely. And taking 15 minutes every single day to add to your personal knowledge is a tremendous investment in yourself, right? Sharpening your saw allows you to be more productive. It gives you more skills, right? Taking 15 minutes out every single day to really look at your business and yourself critically. What did I do yesterday? How well did I do? Did I achieve my goals? How can I do my job better? If you take the time to do that, taking 30 minutes out of your day to make sure you exercise, you do sit up. If you can't go to a gym, that's fine. Do sit ups, do pull ups, do push ups, uh, run in place, whatever you do, but have some sort of physical fitness goal on a daily basis. Make sure you're eating you get right. Make sure you're not over drinking, right? I I drink, you know, I, I, I drink. I mean, you, you, for probably, you know, five five nights a week, I have a drink. Can I comment on the physical fitness part if you want? Please do. I'm sorry, I will make it go on and go. Hey guys, it's, it's a very satisfying feeling. It, 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 you feel like your life is very complete. You can be as successful in business as, want, as you want, as rich as you want, but you'll never be truly a whole person unless your mind, body, and soul are, 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 are in unity and in sequence. Um, you'll live a, your, your quality of life will be so much better. Money can do that, but it's not. It's going to be through your own efforts. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually ecstatic that you put that up there because I have such a strong belief in that. When you're physically fit, you feel more dynamic. If I can do that, well, I can do anything. I did it for 25, 30 years, and, and, and I'm not doing it right now. So <laughs> I can tell that my performance is not what it used to be. All right, and so I have to get back in balance. I used to, I used to be able to do things better than I'm doing them right now. And I, I just, I just feel like I can get in balance. So I'm talking to myself as well. Okay, uh, critical thinking, right? Here, here's something. Why do we do what we do? Why do we do it the way we do it? Why do we have to do it that way, right? I give you, I give you a, a great story, a wonderful story. This young couple gets married, and they decide to create a tradition the first Sunday after their wedding, and they're going to have a, a roast beef and potatoes that's cooked in the oven. So the very first day, they go down to the kitchen. They're all excited. They got to make a roast beef last night, an HEB. And the little bride cuts one end of the roast off on this end and cuts this other end off and puts the roast in the pot and puts one end in here and one end there. His the husband says, why did you do that? Because he's going, why not put the whole thing in there? She said, I don't know. My mom did that. So they called the mom and the mom said, I don't know. My mother did that. So they called the grandmother and she said, well, when we first got married, we only had one pot. And the, and the butcher would never cut the meat for us, so we can only get it in the big part. And Granddaddy loved to have one in, the ends of it really brown, so I put those in there. So here it is, three generations later, we're doing the same damn thing, and nobody knows why. And we have pots big enough. Right. And the butcher will cut the roast, you know. But why do we do what we do, right? We do what we do because that's the way we do it. And you're missing an opportunity if you don't critically think about how you're doing what you're doing. Not to put too many kudos in play for Jerry and I, but when we get through training, the first week, we sit down and we say, what did we do good? What did we do bad? And we're honest as hell. We did good this, we did that. You know, I don't think I brought it on Tuesday. I know I didn't bring it on Wednesday. How can we prevent that from happening? What can we do? And we try to think in terms of, well, how can we present this better? Should we have videos like this? Should we, should we incorporate more out of uh, industry videos to sort of illustrate things to make the learning environment better. How, how should we do it? So we're constantly trying to make the training better, right? Sure, we got a bunch of this stuff. Somebody will run in and say, uh, since this company has just got to the door, we got to do a training session. And we go, oh, and everybody runs <laughs> through the building, go, oh my God, oh my God, we got, don't tell them that someone's always here. You know, we got the enemy over here and the enemy over there. Don't show them. Oh my God, don't let them know they're in the building. You know, and it's crazy. Right? Take that HughesNet shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody take the HughesNet shirt off now. Yeah. Right? So it's crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy. So the more time we spend over here, the less time we have to spend over here. Because we're not having as many crises or as many panics. 
We're not putting out as many fires. You know, a little thing like putting together a, a checklist for sales agents, and then the managers coach to that checklist, will prevent a bunch of this crap from happening. Being consistent, right? So can you see, have I done a relatively good job of convincing you that Q2 is where you need to be? Yes, yes sir. Okay, here's a challenge for you. Get Cubby's book, First Things First. Now, have I have five copies at this half <laughs> price book trail there. First okay. Things First. First Things First by Stephen Cubby. All right. Now, I uh, encourage you to read The Seven Habits First. And First Things First is the third habit. Okay? First Things First is the third habit. But it is a great book that really makes you think about how you live your life. Right? Because we, we're here all the time. Now we don't operate on this, this operates on us. This pulls us by the nose. This makes us do what we have to do during the day. This is really important. All right, summary. <laughs> Principles, characteristics, and habits. Continue to read the books you're reading. Continue to expand. Well, I'll show you what homework is going to look like here in a minute. Leadership roundtable, summary, homework, here we go, homework. <clears throat> look for, everybody write this down, please. Look for, you know what, you don't have to write it down until you your thing. Look for and record other examples of leadership principles, characteristics, habits being modeled in your work environment. I know that's just a lot be prepared to share. Write one paragraph on how you plan to spend more time in quadrant two. Okay? Everybody understand that? What's next? SLI continues on a weekly basis. SLI sessions are recorded, can be listened to or viewed more than once. Uh, Jerry has the first three uh, up. Where, where is it, Jerry? They're uploaded on the T drive. Okay. In sales training videos. They're optimized to be on smartphones, so you can load it right on your phone. And you can go back and listen to this stuff that we've covered before, right? And if you missed something like you missed last week, you can go back there and catch that. Right? Okay. Uh -oh. So, uh, modeling leadership principles, characteristics, and habits is important should be practiced. We picked you guys because you're your current leaders are your potential future leaders for the company. We want you to start modeling that behavior now, right? When we get ready to promote somebody and we need a duck, right, we're not going to go look for a mongoose or a goose or a goat or a mule. If we need a duck, what are we going to look for? Freaking duck. Duck walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and has duck-like behavior. You want to be a duck, you want to be promoted? <laughs> become a duck. Start modeling this behavior. All right, let's say it another way. Not duck. If we're looking for a leader, what are we going to look for? A guy with potential leadership that screws off all the time, doesn't do anything we tell him to do, never in his, never in his chair, gives his crap all the time? No. He can have all the leadership potential in the world. He's not going to get promoted. Who's going to get promoted? The guy who looks like a leader. Acts like a leader. Thinks like a leader. Does leadership things. That's a guy who gets promoted, right? See you next week.